Well, welcome one, welcome all to V3 Fight. This is exciting, the house is packed. Well, here we go. Pretty electric, man. People are on their feet. This is your main event. Wow. Let me hear you make I'm some noise. Here we go. Nice take down. Oh, wow. Now he's in a full mount. He's raining down elbows. Let's see if they touch gloves. Look wow. at that. That's a nice takedown. Trying to finish here. Right over. Ladies and gentlemen, declaring your winner. It's staying undefeated. Everyone here just got to witness V3 history. I'm booking a private jet to Tuscany. You thought of me? Huh? I really need to get there fast. Who the fuck you think you're talking to? Shut up, little boy. I'm talking to Fredo. Un poco di rispetto. Fredo. Sorry, Al. There was someone disturbing me. So I was telling you about Airwolf Jet Services. They're friends of ours. The best. Amazing service. You should check them out now. www.airwolfjetservices.com Are you looking for a good fight? Check out the fight pay-per-view schedule. Watch on the biggest screen in the house. What's the fight tonight? MMA, boxing, pro wrestling, live on pay-per-view. Just tap play and pick a screen to watch on. Playback shifts instantly to the screen of your choice. No hardware, no hassle. Download the Fight app and start watching today. A sport that bridges generations. Live everywhere. Fight gives you instant access to live pay-per-view and free combat sports programs. Check out our combat sports schedule at fight.tv. Fight. Start watching.
This is Chris Allen of the MMA Fight Bible and John Boy McElroy of Martial Arts Chat Podcast with your weekly MMA Power Hour news update. In the MMA news this week, Rose Namanunas has thrown some doubt on her fighting future, but if she decides to carry on, what should come next? The former strawweight champ was clearly questioning her next move following a shocking knockout loss to Jessica Andrade at uh, this past weekend's event at UFC 237 Brazil. Wondering aloud if she had the desire to continue competing, but emotions certainly run high in moments such as that, and she is still clearly one of the best female fighters on the planet, so let's not get angry and doubt. So if she decides to continue on, where does her career Stand well, she looked phenomenal in the open round. We've got to say against Andrade, they ultimately suffered a knockout loss, and her title reign ended with just one defense of that title. Is that enough to want a rematch with Andrade? Should Namunis choose uh, to follow such a path? Who knows, man? I hope she doesn't give up fighting because she, she is one of the one of the greatest fighters in the modern era, and it'd just be good to see her back. Maybe just some time off roads, heal up, man. It was a, a nasty spike to the head. Let's see how you got on. If you haven't seen the fight, though please do watch it this past weekend was uh, was a barn burner as they say uh, over that free weekend as well we saw BJ Penn uh, set a record for the most amount of losses this losing streak man why is this guy still fighting I've no idea losing a unanimous decision this time to Clay Guida it's been an unfortunate time for Penn though the man once known as the prodigy like we said he's only won once in, in, in the last decade I think that was was that Matt Hughes at UFC 123 um, he's also had a pair of retirements that haven't stuck with this latest loss, fans like myself once again wondering why doesn't he just hang up the gloves. But one of Penn's former opponents, fellow welterweight champion himself, beat, uh, Matt Serra, he says he understands what the guy's going through now. He was speaking on the UFC Unfiltered podcast and he said, dude, let me tell you, I'm 44. I fought him when I was 28. The guy has been around, man. Serra said the guy has been around and, and it's not just with the money either with BJ. I just think he, he does this for so long when it comes down to what's next. That's just what you're used to is like a routine he said it felt weird when I stopped uh, like I don't have a fight coming up even in a few months what's going on what am I going to do with myself so I mean I guess there is probably going to be that in BG Penn's mind but on the back of this Clay Guida loss the man of uh, Penn obviously as we said Clay Guida he's now calling out Ned Diaz he's basically well calling out Santa Claus because in case you ain't realised by now folks the Diaz brothers are never fighting again much like BG Penn they have now become a meme sad than it please retire BG please retire BG Penn please retire again but stay retired Less than two months ago, we said goodbye to veteran Ross the Real Deal Pearson of the UK as he finally decided to hang up the gloves after his last defeat. Ross the Real Deal Pearson did tell all his fans that this wasn't the end and he was looking to do other things. And I think if anyone didn't believe him, then, well, they weren't really thinking straight that day. Ross Pearson thinks now it's time for him to have a go at a professional boxing career. He's already had his first professional fight, which took place last Wednesday in Australia. And as ever, the Real Deal did what he did best and he knocked out his opponent in the second round making this a very successful debut in this sport for Pearson. It'll be good to see what Pearson does going forward from here. Um, he was asked recently if this is just a one-off sort of thing or is this something he's really looking to do going forward? And he replied, I want to get to world level in this sport and he's, I'm serious, world level. I can fight anyone. I've got all the punches and durability and now it's about learning the sport, the combinations, patterns and timing of the fight. <sighs> So Pearson, he had a long career in MMA with 36 fights in total and debuting back in the UFC in 2009. He has had a lot of time in the ring or the cage, a lot of experience with competition. So maybe this is the beginning of something beautiful for Ross Pearson and us as the UK fans would love to see him continue to fight, improve his career until he does finally, re finally retire from the combat sports altogether and pass his knowledge on through coaching and other means. As well as a fantastic card of UFC last weekend, let's not forget that Bellator also held a magnificent event with Michael Chandler defending his title against Pitbull and also MVP taking on Douglas Lima as well as many other fights on that card. Michael Chandler, you know, he went in there as one of the favourites thinking he'd be able to defend his title, especially with his performances had recently. And the outcome wasn't what a lot of people may have thought with Pitbull coming through with a great win, TKOing Chandler, where many thought was a quick stoppage. But Chandler, being the humble man that he is, said, look, this a, short, a, a quick stoppage could have happened to me. He said it could have been exactly the other way around. This time, 
time it was for him. He won the fight at the end of the day, and now it's up to me to try and go get go back and get my title. So now Pitbull becomes the second ever champ champ to be in Bellator alongside um, Ryan Bader. So it'll be interesting who he'll be fighting next. And I know Brent Primus with his recent win against Tim Wilde a couple of weeks ago at Bellator Birmingham has been gunning for Michael Chandler. And even if he may be the obvious choice to be the next one to fight for this title, he has expressed that he does want to fight Chandler with or without the title as he wants redemption for their fights they've had in the past. This one-on-one it is, would be now going into a third fight with them, making the trilogy complete. So I'm sure this is the fight that will happen next, but we'll have to wait and see. Also, Michael Venn and Page taking on Douglas Lima. Sad story for us UK fans, but at the end of the day, what a win for Douglas Lima. What a fantastic high- highlight reel knockout of one of the most watched up-and-coming fights in Bellator at the moment in Michael Venn and Page. MVP, come forward as he always does, aggressive. He got hit by a nasty leg kick by Douglas Lima dropping him and as he was sitting as he was standing up which is an unusual knockout to see Lima caught him with a swift uppercut it looked like which caught MVP right on the chin knocking him clean out as well giving Lima the win and MVP's first loss you can imagine the MVP would not be happy about this but he has stated that if he was going to lose to anyone you know he's glad that it is it was Douglas Lima and I quote from Michael Venom Page if I had to take one L in my career I'm glad it was with this warrior Douglas Lima an amazing martial artist and person. I felt like I was in control the whole fight, made a mistake by standing up incorrectly, and at this level, it only takes one bad choice, and I paid for it. But I'm still smiling and even more motivated to get back in the cage and correct that mistake. It'll be interesting to see what's next for for Michael Venom Page, and I'm sure going forward now, Douglas Lima only has eyes for the title. Nate Diaz is finally back, and he's going to be taking on Anthony Showtime Pettis this August. It's great to see Nate back in the cage after all his wars he had with Conor McGregor to see him take on a different opponent and make his rise back to the top as he's so absolutely capable of doing but he's not going to be facing anyone easy he's facing Anthony Showtime Pettis you know former champion and even this fight is at 170 Pettis has had success at this weight class already defeating Stephen Wonderboy Thompson in a very tough fight as well so it's a very tough one to choose in this Nate's been out for a while you know Pettis has been active he's been doing well really really looking forward to seeing the outcome of this but most importantly it's great to see Nate Diaz back in the organisation fighting again and working his way towards a title again potentially The refs have called it This is Chris Allen and John McElroy with your weekly MMA Power Hour news update Coming up next is another knockout episode of the MMA Power Hour with Colin and Adam Until next time, we're tapping out Welcome to the MMA Power Hour. You caught me by surprise, didn't you? Can you feel the power? Yes, I can. I hope you can too. We've got a great show and I am super excited because we have an amazing addition to our staff. We have our Reflective Concept Audio uh, Supervisor, Moo. And uh, he is making everything with a combination of uh, the work that Dr. Adam Rorda and he is doing this show is gonna is looking absolutely better than ever. Uh, can you give us the green light that all is good to go for this show, Moo? There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Moo. I appreciate that. Well, we've got a great show in store for you. So jump on right in. Dr. Adam Morda, did you think did you think there was livestock in the studio this. or did you, uh, did you know that it, was Moo? Well, I knew it was Moo. Yes. But. That's a good thing. How are you today? You look great, as always. Uh, let us know what's going on in the world of Dr. Lion F. Fist cryptocurrency Rorda. Uh, way too much, but uh, uh, watching the cryptocurrency moves do exactly as you and I have predicted for the last month, actually, yes. uh, almost to the T for the price, which is kind of cool, but, uh, you know, just really excited catching up with all things MMA. i uh, been hanging out on combatpress.com I'm always talking about them but catching up here because I haven't been able to watch all the fights and all the fighters do their thing so just uh, really getting caught up with everything including working on uh, getting into our next studio which is in uh, over closer to you actually Excellent. so we're, we're looking on making our next move here already soon and just super excited to be back at it after being kind of stuck in uh, pre-production on almost everything that's it the pre-production uh 
the curse of pre-production it's like this crazy limbo if you guys have never been in it you don't know but if you have ever been in it you understand man that pre-production can be craziness uh, but anyway <laughs> doctor i have no idea what i'm talking about but my team knows they know what's going on with this pre-production i can guarantee you that so uh doctor Adam, we got a few minutes left here uh before our first guest but maybe only five minutes uh in that time man what a uh, card on saturday we had bellator and ufc i went to a sports bar and where I was watching both. The TVs were on both, although it did take some working with the guys at the sports bar to keep Bellator on as it kept going off and on. And then you had baseball and hockey on. The girls were asking to keep it on or turn it off, and it was uh, crazy. But it was a, a lot of fun. There were some amazing fights. Uh, I, I really loved what I saw. It seems like uh, in, uh, in Bellator, we uh, we had some uh, some great results uh, with uh, with the Brazilian champion. In fact, both main events were won by the Brazilians. But my good friends, the Brazilians, ended up not winning a lot of the decisions after that. Unfortunately, Jose Aldo, who I was hoping would win, came up a little bit short. Anderson Silva was looking good until he got. Uh, got kicked in a leg and uh, possibly a leg that had been broken years ago and uh, so you know I'm not really surprised with Anderson I was definitely surprised with Jose but uh, Volkanovski is I mean he's a beast yeah. uh, you know you see the rankings below here it might be a little controversial with some of you but I I personally put him at number two spot now I mean he's only got one loss and and is really just making a name for himself the last couple fights and, and it's, it's just super impressive to see how he's laying it down yeah absolutely he is a lot of people would think that uh, Zabit Megamed Sharapov might be uh, one above him, and uh, and I understand if you do, but definitely Volkanovski is a tough, tough guy. Just a, just a rugged, tough dude. Uh, really good skills, and it's like he had hardly had a mark on his face. Aldo did come out say saying it was one of the worst fights. Uh, he, performances he's ever given uh, I don't think it was that bad but it did seem like he wasn't pulling the trigger you know uh, as much but definitely he didn't get smashed or annihilated by any means so uh, Anderson Silva yet yeah, 44 that may be time to call it quits uh, his leg just gave out although it was a pretty hard kick and Jer Jared Cannonier is no joke that's that's for sure uh, I did call it right for the past couple of years on this show when I said Michael Venom Page, MVP, is punking all these fighters. Wait until he gets in there with Douglas Lima. And you, yep. you heard me say this numerous times. And finally it happened, Douglas Lima knocking the crap out of him. KOing him in a, in a first couple minutes of the first round. And, uh, you know, all respect to Michael Venom Page, but Douglas Lima is a beast. Uh, he's going to have that rematch with Rory, it looks like. Uh, and I think he wins this time. And that was an amazing fight a couple years ago uh, with uh, Lima and Rory going to a razor close decision. Rory picking up the victory on most people's uh, cards only for getting a ton of takedowns in the last round. But should be tough. Uh, should be a really good fight. And uh, But that will be actually. Actually, I've jumped ahead of myself. That will be if Rory does get by Naaman Gracie, and that's going to be coming up first. Still feel that I still feel that John Fitch should be in there. Uh, I do too. Well. I feel he yeah. should be in there going up against Naaman yeah. Gracie. But yeah. hey, it, it is what it is, yeah. and, and it, that'll be a, an awesome match to watch. I, I do feel he'll get right past Naaman. Yeah, absolutely. And then a controversial finish with. Uh, with uh, Patricio Pitbull, Freire, uh catching Michael Chandler behind the ear early in the fight and then going to finish him and, and Chandler kind of defending himself with his arms up like this, kind of turtled up, which, you know, I'm going to ask a couple of our guests about tonight. Also, for people watching, what do you guys think? Is it a defense? I mean, obviously, if you're flat in your stomach and you're flattened out and you're getting smashed, that's not a defense. But if you got your if you got your knees up and you're and you're turtled up and you're and you're blocking your head, you know, is that a legit defense where you're trying to defend yourself before you explode upward or or you know roll into the guard or do something or not? Should you be given a chance if a person is kind of standing over you? Uh, hitting you and you're turtled up with your arms up like that. A lot of people feel you shouldn't. A lot of people feel you should. Michael Chandler felt he should because the punches weren't actually killing him. Uh, and then the fight was stopped there against, uh, you know, Patricio Freire. May have been a bit early. Some of the people I was watching uh, did feel that way. But uh, kudos to Patricio Pitbull Freire uh, for becoming Bellator's second champ champ or double champ or peace champ. 
and uh, you know that's uh, uh, amazing now featherweight and lightweight I'm sure Chandler can't wait to get a rematch uh, and if it was in the UFC he probably wouldn't get one but Bellator may just uh, allow that and uh, I think so, I think it'd be a good fight certainly they're not gonna have uh, the Pitbull brothers fight each other and uh, you know so we know that's out anyway if you want to get working as I'm sure you are Dr. Adam Rorda on getting that guest on there's so much to talk to her about can't wait to, to get her going here and then we'll talk a lot more about this past weekend's fights and the upcoming and coming weekend's fight seems like every week for the next few weeks there's some good I fights are we ready just to do our Skype dance here? Yeah, I, I think we should do it. And Moo, should we do our Skype dance? That's a yes. Thank you, Moo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the green light. As long as you hear that mooing, you know we're on track. Okay, so uh, the lion fist, Moo gave us the green light, and now you give me the green light. I see that green light there, and uh, we'll get uh, the Skype dance going as soon as you're ready. Where the heck is that? I'm trying to dance while I have a notebook in my hand. Here it is. All right, now we're talking here. <laughs> that moo. <laughs> That's it. Awesome moo. Thank you. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Does that mean she? You might need to send her a quick message. Yeah. This does happen, boys and girls. Before we get in here, yes. I want to go ahead and give a huge shout out to Combat Press, where hey, you can go over to, to combatpress.com, where every there. fight yeah, has on. a story. I go to them for their news with all things combat sports related. I think you should too. It keeps me up to date everywhere with this stuff. And we're talking every organization, kickboxing, boxing. Like I said, every single combat sport is presented there on their website. So go on over to combatpress.com. Also want to go ahead and give a huge thank you to Digi South for helping out with the social media. Everything social media related, you can go on over to digisouth.co and start your plan with them. Social media marketing, as I said, I was so impressed with the way they handled, thing. I handled things. I went ahead and became a partner myself. And uh, I, I can help you out. If you don't want to uh, deal with the people you don't know, go ahead and send me a message privately on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you're following me, uh, even hit us up on YouTube. Call him, we'll get me stuff over if he sees it. Uh, and then also, I want to say thank you to our awesome sponsors over at CrossTrainMMAFighter.com. They've been supplying t shirts for us. And uh, if you want to purchase an MMA Power Hour t shirt, you see us wearing it sometimes, you see it up on our Instagram. Go on over to crosstrainedmmafighter.com. Uh, you can order the crosstrainedmmafighter.com t-shirts, or you can send an email and get a hold of uh, Colin. Actually, it's his company. He went ahead and purchased them. What was it about a year ago? Yeah, absolutely. I was uh, like what they were doing so much. I not only was interested, I became an owner. Wait a second, you beat me to that line with <laughs> Digi South, but I think I beat you to actually doing it uh, with Cross Train MMA Fighter. Yeah, and we have our Cross Train Fighter line uh, out there as well. So hit me up. Prices are very reasonable and. And uh, top, top quality shirts, really not the junk that uh, some other companies put out there. Let's see what our guest says. She yeah. said she had something come up last minute. Is there, oh my goodness, you're kidding me. Oh no. Then we reschedule for Friday. She's not home at the moment. No, we only do Wednesday shows. <laughs> um, well, it, it is what it is. Well, hey, uh, real quick while Colin's sitting here figuring some stuff out, I want to go ahead and give one more quick thank you to Warfighter Hemp. You can go on over to warfighterhemp.com where you can get some CBD products and hemp products. Uh, for 50% off, you can go ahead and use the code MMACBD and they will give you 50% off, half half off, however you want to look at it. I, I say the, the price is half full, but... <laughs> Well, just check them out. They've got some awesome CBD, high quality products, no impurities. They are probably my favorite supplier for all CBD products. Uh, you don't need to be getting high or anything. That's not necessarily what it's all about. Uh, go on over to there to uh, Warfight, warfighterhemp.com. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, let's see what can happen uh let's see if she may be able to come on a little bit later but maybe not unfortunately yeah she's someone that that we really appreciate and respect on the show she's been on twice before she's she is a super cool person and reliable something came up um with her i know i, I you know it, it's it's you know all, it, res, all it is what it is things happen she asked if somehow she can do this friday because she doesn't you know doesn't know that we really just go live wednesday nights except for on a really rare occasion uh when somehow we can get the studio but 
Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so looks like she's wanting to see if she can come on next Wednesday. So yeah, it looks like she won't be able to do it tonight. So we're going to uh, absolutely graciously accept her offer uh, for that. Oh, and that actually works out perfectly. It does. We're, it does. Uh, wow. Much appreciated, Macy. Absolutely. Next Wednesday will be great. And the time, and she says she really does want to be on the show, guys, uh, again. So let me see. Let me get the time here. It's funny. Everything I'm dictating is now being picked up. Uh, Dr. Adam Rorda, say something clever. Move, do no moves gone. All right. <laughs> we've got let our, me see we've here. Got, uh, we've got our, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've got our cow out in the studio. Yes, the cow is going. Wait, so, okay, wait a second. I'm going to say, okay. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish dictating. Then I'll come up with some great witty repartee in about 15 seconds. Okay, wait a second here. All right, next one. Wednesday will be great, and uh, the time, where, where are we? And this way you guys are finding out in advance, much in advance, who's gonna be on next week at the time, uh, would be 9.20 p.m. Central Time, if that's okay with you, question mark. Wow. All right, advance information you guys get there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a, an amazing recap after we get the green light here from Macy Chesson, who will be on next week. We're gonna do an amazing recap. I'm gonna give you guys amazing, incredible uh, insight off the top of my head. We'll go back and forth to Dr. Adam Rorda, just like we used to for some of you original fans uh, of our show, which has been on for two years and, and one month, two years and two months now. Uh, we're gonna really break down uh, what we saw, but especially break down the upcoming fights, uh, whichever of those Dr. Adam Rorda is familiar with and the rest, I will absolutely break breakdown and um so I'm, i believe that she said yeah she really wants to be on next week and she's really apologizing and her apology is accepted okay so dr adam rorda last saturday jessica andrage against thug rose nama Yunus. i was on the fence as i think you may have been or you may have gone for rose i don't know i was i was leaning in all honesty to toward jessica andrage i just thought that she has the intensity and the determination and it's over there in brazil and she has so much pride for you know in her country and herself she so much wanted to win for her her wife and her mom and all the people there uh, in fact they put the title belt over her mother's shoulder and her mom was kind of like what the heck? you know but it was a cool moment um question for you guys and i can't see the 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 question the the answers unfortunately when you write in we're going to get that back going within the next few weeks but when I first saw that slam, my first question was, ooh, is that a foul? Because oh, yeah. I, right, I went back in time 20 years to Frank Shamrock versus Igor Zinoviev uh, when he slammed him on his head, and that was pretty much the last time we ever saw Igor Zinoviev in the cage because I think he had a really bad concussion, could have broken his neck, could have paralyzed him. I think it was only maybe six or seven years after that that they – outlawed spiking someone on their head now spiking someone on their head would be grabbing someone kind of manipulating their body aiming their head down and throwing them on the ground that wasn't what jessica and Draj did in fact there were two slams as you guys knew in, in that fight the first fight Rose went down on her back, she rolled, and she kind of kept in contact. I think she kept connected to one of uh, Jessica's arms and was working for the arm bar. Uh, the second one, she did end up going down on the side of her face and her head. And uh, very dangerous. The results could be disastrous if that happens. I, I, I don't think it was intentional at all. Um, I, 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 I don't think it was intentional at all for it to happen like that. And, and, you know, being that there was a submission being put on her at that time, I mean, that's why it was considered legal. Otherwise, that would have been considered a foul. Uh, well, I appreciate the introduction, Dr. Adam Morda. I mean, I, I don't know that Rose in the air was working on any submissions when she was elevated, not to, to, to argue the point. But I, I think what it was was that it wasn't intentional, but you know what I think also? I think being that the UFC is the m m governing body as well as the promoter of the event, they were kind of able to say, you know what, we don't want to get killed here trying to get out of Brazil if we call this a disqualification and a foul, and you know, we're the promoter as well as the sanctioning body, so hell with it, it's okay. Um, possibly if it were in boxing where there's a sanctioning body, someone from there would have jumped up there and said, hey, 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 wait a second here. We gotta look at this. 
I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know and I'll be able to respond after the show when I see your comments. I don't want to take it away from Jessica because she didn't purposely try to try to sign. Funny enough, she is called the Bata, what, Bata Azteca, I think, which is pile driver in Portuguese, and she ends up pile driving almost right. Rose Namunas. Thank God Rose was okay. Um, God bless Rose for being such a tough girl uh, to go and do an after interview after probably being seriously concussed. Um, when you're when you're when you're hurt. It's kind of a bummer feeling physiologically. I've never been slammed on my head, but I've definitely played sports where I had jarring, almost concussive injuries to my head. I ran into a, a cement pole once playing football outside and not a good feeling. And if someone were to ask you questions, then you're not gonna be having this great euphoric, happy feeling in your body. So I understand that at that time, Rose was talking about maybe this is enough for her and, and like that. Maybe she does feel that way. It's a hell of a grind. It's really hard, even though she's a young woman, but I don't know, it'd be interesting to see uh, when, when Rose starts to possibly heal up from what must be a concussion, um, what she wants to talk about, because if she, she was winning that fight. And I don't think Dr. Adam Rorda can deny that. She was picking uh, Jessica Andrade apart with her strikes. I think that Jessica is such a strong girl at 115 that weren't really devastatingly hurting her or staggering her, but they were busting up her face and they were scoring. So Rose was employing the great strategy there. I think like Rose said, you know, the funny thing, you notice what Rose said about when finally Jessica did close the gap that second time for that second and final devastating slam. Rose said that leading up to that, she just kind of lost her concentration and lost interest a little bit. Um, right. And that's interesting. I mean, that, that, that does make sense, uh, unfortunately. They might be too scared to lose concentration when someone's trying to knock your head off, but I guess it really depends. When you're a champion, just, you know, something can hit you. And Rose is a very strong, uh, emotional, uh, strong person emotionally and, and mentally, but she said that it just, she just started to not, not feel focused or or really interested anymore, which is, you know, unfortunate. Um, but great fight. Uh, if, 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 if Rose uh, wants the rematch, she should get it for sure. In fact, I would think it would be insane. If Rose wants the rematch, I would think that's a done deal. Wouldn't you, Dr. Adam Rota? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, if she doesn't, or if for whatever reason, uh, they don't give it to her, Joanna Janjacek has a record of 2-0 and against... Uh, does she? I keep I keep forgetting. She lost. She did lose twice to Joanna Janjacek, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And so Joanna wants that. Joanna actually kind of put out a picture that some people are hating on. That actually the text said, "Congratulations, Jessica Andrade, you're a great champion, Sean." And then it showed a picture though uh, above the caption of Joanna kicking uh, Andrade in the face from one of their fights. And I saw some guy really pissed saying. Wow, Joanna, you're really low, you know, congratulating the champ and putting out this tweet where you're kicking her in the face, at, you know, uh, to try to get attention, you know, uh, for your cause and whatever. I don't know. I mean, it is what it is, but that would be interesting. And then Tatiana Suarez and Nina Ansaroff, that's a fight coming up that I really think the winner is going to be close to uh, uh, ready for or possibly even next if Rose doesn't materialize or if they don't want to give it to Joanna, especially Tatiana Suarez has just been on a terror killing everyone. But if Nina Ansaroff gets by her, I think one of those two could be ready. Now, I know we had a great chat with Tanya Evinger last week and Tanya felt that it may be a little bit of a rush for those girls, but they should definitely take it if they're given the chance and, and she was sure they would. Um, what do you think, Doc, if you had to choose which order do you think the, the, the contenders are as far as who's deserving to get in there with Jessica from first to third between uh, Rose, Joanna Yunjechik, the former champ, and the winner of Tatiana Suarez and Ansaroff, and who you, and what you think will happen, who's going to be in there next with Andraj? Uh, Rose again? Joanna? Uh, 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 Joanna. Joanna is who I think deserves it. I, I really do. I, I kind of agree with her. She's got a little cocky, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I really think that she deserves a, a shot here, uh, considering we, it, she's 2-0. Yeah, against, against the champ. Yeah. Against the champ. Yeah. So I, I really feel a, a true rubber match is is 
called for here. Yeah. And and I would be excited to see it. I think most people would even tune in for it. Yeah. Now, in Brazil, I'm sure is where uh, the champ Andrade would love to have that fight. I'm going to bet you almost anything, Joanna wouldn't probably not agree to that location. What do you think? No, no. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I don't she, see that being she'd her. probably say have it in Poland, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I think it might be a neutral uh a neutral uh, grounds as, as the old MMA uh, promotion, neutral grounds, uh, you know, uh, would be where they have that fight. But anyway, we'll see. Um, uh, where are we? Chandler against Pitbull. We talked about Lima against Page. Uh, Page was doing all right in that fight. He seemed to have the perspective that he was winning, but he was hardly landing anything. He was quick. He was staying away. He looked like he was scared of getting hit by Lima. And then he did slip, and it showed how quick Lima's reflexes were when, when he saw um uh, mvp in front of him uh right. getting up he just nailed him and, and finished him he's a really great fighter douglas lima but mvp will be back i think but it's nice maybe he'll be a little bit humbled after getting smashed this time but it was nice that both fighters had a lot of respect for each other um right uh so coming up this saturday we've got a really really interesting card maybe that's too many really it's a it's a, it's a really interesting card uh the head the headliner is uh rda rafael Dos Anjos, the former lightweight champion who's been campaigning at welterweight for a couple years now and doing pretty well. Uh, going up against Kevin Lee, who has been talking about how hard making lightweight has been uh, for him for several years. And finally, when he did lose as a favorite to Al Quinta, he is making the move. And that fight is this Saturday. Uh, interesting fight. Both really strong guys. Both former lightweights. Going to be the first foray into the the 175 170 pound division for kevin lee motown phenom from detroit uh like i like rda though i've got several brazilian friends and my teachers are both brazilian former ufc fighters and so it, this is it's a tough one for me uh, i'd love to see both guys fight hard and uh i can't call it i think that uh it just may be an, an amazing battle, though, where they maybe just beat the crap out of each other. What's your thought on that matchup? I know maybe these two guys aren't uh, the highest on your radar, but any any just prediction just off the cuff, and then we can go on uh, to the next one. Rafael or Rafael dos Anjos, RDA against I, I, Kevin I, Lee. You know Kevin Lee. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they are on my radar. I, I would say Kevin Lee. Yeah. His wrestling's better, and that that's what seems to be the kryptonite. Uh, to uh, Rafael Dos Anjos in the welterweight division. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Aspen Ladd against Cijara Eubanks. Cijara Eubanks is our good friend. Uh, we had her on the show a few times. We'd love to have her again. She's trying to coordinate uh, every everything that she can as far as her, her media responsibilities, and it's more uh, than usual now that she's got this big fight, but she absolutely uh, responds whenever we hit her up and, and, and thanks us uh, for being behind her and we will remain behind her and hopefully soon uh before uh, summer or during summer we can uh, get her right back here on the show and uh she had lost previously to aspen lad i'm going with c jara eubanks for a uh, an impressive victory i'm going to say by stoppage maybe even by submission uh and uh and i feel pretty confident in that Dr. Adam Rorto, what's your thoughts? He Jara Eubanks, Aspen Lad at 135. You know, this is a real tough one. I, I hate to put a vote out there against uh, Sajara because I, I'm not going to. Um, Aspen has really been proving herself, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, considering this isn't a vote, you know, I, I vote for Sadra. She is a good friend of the show. Aspen, though, I, I think she has a good chance. She really does. She's been holding her own and, and really making a wave. Yeah, she, she's favored. She, she's I mean, favored. Yeah. <sighs> Aspen, Aspen has more than a chance. I think Sajara, though, she's going to come back with vengeance. Yeah, I think, I mean, they fought a close one three years ago, and that was mm -hmm. before Sajara was in the Ultimate Fighter house and really got on track. Now, many people will say she got on track killing it at flyweight, and now she's back at bantamweight. But the bottom line is I think she got a great deal of confidence in her game and made some improvements and got some great, great people around her. Um, and uh, I, I think that she's going to show that here and uh, and beat the streaking uh, Aspen Lad. Okay, uh, Megan Anderson, another former guest on our show, against Felicia Spencer, the Aussie, uh, Megan Anderson, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Always love the Aussies. <laughs> I, I think right, and 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 
Right. Megan is a cool person. Nothing against her, but I'm, I'm thinking Felicia Spencer here. Uh, Felicia Spencer, some of you may know, uh, won the Invicta featherweight title earlier. Was it earlier this year, Doc, or, or late last year? One of the two. I think it was about four or five months ago uh, uh, against a very game Pam Sorensen from Minnesota. A lot right. of great fighters over there. And um, and uh, she was not allowed to get have one defense even. And Invicta, they brought her over just like they brought over Verna Jandaroba. Jandaroba losing to Carla Esparza, who I was very happy with the win. She's with Team Colin Oyama. And we had Coach Oyama on the show. And he's a great guy and uh, very excited for Carla. I think, though, that this Invicta champion import is going to win it's a tough fight megan is six inches taller dr adam rorda six inches taller a lot more reach um but megan was out grappled by holly and holly although her wrestling has gotten a little bit better is pretty much a high level striker not so much grappler and so felicia is a, is a tough girl she's strong she's a good grappler i think she's going to grind out a win uh, against Megan here and then put her herself in a in a good position to possibly be fighting for the uh, vacant featherweight title if, if Cyborg's not there or maybe fighting Cyborg. Should be interesting though, I know Megan is going to try her, her hardest to win and and she could if she if put it this way if like i said before to tanya if felicia is uh backpedaling near the cage and megan throws a kick and felicia's hands are not up she may get a toenail in the eye let's hope not <laughs> Kat Zingano is still reeling i think from that hopefully she is healing though and not reeling because we I, I, you know what I, i'm gonna have to go against you on this one i think megan's just gonna take it straight up oh wow i i, I see a first round knockout from from uh megan and it, it's really going to happen. I, yeah. I mean, I, I'm putting my money on it. Okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, it's interesting because you're the wrestler here. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and, for me to say that. And you you're should. picking the striker against the superior wrestler. Now, I guess in defense of, of your stance, I don't think many women had college programs where they were like D1 All-American, but then some of them went to the Olympics, like Sarah McMahon. Yeah. I guess you could say Felicia Spencer's wrestling might not be akin to like a, her male counterpart who was a D1 you know, national uh, champion. I, I, would, I would say she, she is. But she's good. She's good. But maybe just, not that great. In other words, you're, you're thinking... Too be, much reach, too much of the fact that the one with the reach actually has a phenomenal striking game, can grapple a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not like she has a horrible wrestling game i mean megan has definitely held her on there a little bit too uh, yeah. actually quite a bit so i i think her stepping up to the plate and, and really just throwing a few uh, massive strikes in the first round is all it's going to take to Fel take felicia out yeah it could be right although wouldn't you think that possibly um uh that possibly with megan knowing she's in there against a good grappler a, a better jujitsu girl and a better wrestler that she may be a little bit tentative to start or do you think megan's just going to go out right away and say let me take this girl out of here i would say if it were like three or four inches for her reach differential i would say she'd be focusing on it more i think she's going to be focusing on definitely keeping the distance and utilizing it to her advantage i think she's going to do that uh felicia uh, I, I think you made a, a great point is uh she doesn't have nearly as much wrestling as experience. I, I think she's just as good, but uh, and, and not nearly as much as a lot of these gold medalist Olympians. And, uh, right, or the male uh, counterparts, so, yeah. So for Megan, she, all she has to do is just keep that distance and, and know when to strike, and, and it, she's going to be watching for the takedown as an advantage for the strike. I mean, Megan is just phenomenal with her striking, and, and I've, I've been a huge fan of her since you introduced her to me, actually. Yep. Yep. And, and uh, you know, I've gone back and watched a lot of her highlight reels in Invicta and, and, and just really tried to get to know her as a fighter. And frankly, I, I I just don't see Felicia coming in and being able to bring that level of fighting for her big UFC fight. You know? I mean, that, that debut fight really puts you at a dis disadvantage. Ah, you're because, right. She may have an adrenaline dump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and wrestlers, I, I I don't see that much of an advantage to the the wrestler. Uh, pedigree i guess when when you step into your debut match in the ufc you're talking about a whole new level your excitement level is way too high and like you said it's an adrenaline dump the yep. second you get in there and you start moving all of a sudden you realize you've been going off of that adrenaline it, it, you can't really help it i mean you can try to get yourself there but 
until it actually happens, there's no real stopping that adrenaline. No, no, I, it, it's true. And, uh, you know, it, that could happen. It's an, I'm not going to say it's a, it, it fights a certainty. I'll still stick with my pick of Felicia Spencer, but uh, we shall see. It should be a very interesting fight. Uh, we then have our friend Zach Cummings, who has been on our show a couple times. Oh, yeah. He, he was on just a week ago or so, a couple weeks, and he's going up against Trevin Giles. I got Zach Cummings for sure. The Missouri boy is going to take that one. Trevin Giles is on a streak, but does doesn't have the experience or the level of uh, opponents that Zach Cummings has. I think this is going to be a big win for Zach Cummings. Oh, I, I would say absolutely yes to that. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm seeing that the UFC is putting a lot into pumping up Zach Cummings as well lately, which is really exciting. I mean, he deserves it a lot. He is one of my favorite fighters uh, because of his... Uh, uh, Missouri, Missouri background. So yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm watching him very closely, and, and I actually have a lot of uh, mutual friends with him. Come to find out, so uh, just get to uh, watch his uh, evolution happen, and, and you know he's in it for the long haul still, and he's he's going to keep winning. I, yeah. I, and you know going up against. Uh, I don't want to call him a tomato can, but for Zach it is. <laughs> I don't know if he'd say that about Trevin Giles, but for he, Zach may, he, he may turn him into one. Hopefully he will. So speak, here's a question, a little bit of movie trivia for you. For you. Which classic movie uh, had the state of Missouri in the title? I'll give you a hint. It's from the 70s. I have no idea. All right. This was a movie starring Marlon Brando and Jack Nicholson together. Two legends, the only time ever called the Missouri Breaks. A very strange movie that apparently Brando improvised in in virtually the whole movie. And, and at one point he had a weird Irish accent. At another point he didn't. At another point for some reason he was dressed as a, a Native American. And the rest of the scenes he wasn't. He was Irish. It's an odd one. Jack Nicholson was young. Marlon Brando. Check it out. Missouri Breaks. Weird movie. <laughs> anyway, that's Missouri history there for you. Uh, uh, not okay. just Missouri, but that's movie history. That's right movie. There. So, so for you trivia fans, you yes. definitely be tuning in every week. Cause yes. Colin does have a lot of these random tidbits and then it's yes. really exciting. Uh, real quick, I want to say thank you to everybody that's here right now watching. Even though Macy was unable to make it, she will be here next week. I want to say thank you for hanging in there with us. Uh, definitely leave us some comments. Give us a like, a share. Uh, let your friends know that you're tuning in because we could use all the help in the world. And we thank you in advance for that because it really helps us out, helps us evolve the show, helps get us into that next studio and really makes things move forward for us. Uh, want to give another quick shout out to Combat Press for providing some awesome news. It's no fluff news, but when I say awesome, it, it's just consistent. They're putting it out every day, regularly, multiple stories, and they're providing us with plenty of food, uh, food for thought, food for really, thought. and it, helping us get it out there on our page. And we just want to also put a call out there to anybody that would like to go ahead and uh, provide some written journalism and some photography, anything like that. We are trying to get that integrated into our website, which is being built, but we do need uh, some con uh some commitments here so that you can uh, go ahead and or we know that we can go ahead and uh, rely on you to go ahead and put out news for us on a regular basis uh, so hit us up with a message if you'd be interested either call in or myself and we will get back to you and and see what we can get worked out absolutely uh, speaking of which sorry to interrupt you doc but uh, are we almost at the point where our great contributor will blow in here from uh, from Thailand for the Asia beat you know what, Dana Bluen, I guess, is about to blow in. He's about we'll, to blow we'll in. We'll go ahead and be right back, and we'll catch you soon. Thank you, guys. And what's going on? I'm we are muted. Cool. I just put it on. I put it on orange also. Okay. All right. Good stuff. This is funny with Macy, you know, and she said, I'm really I'm sorry. I'm
Poon sign a multi-fight deal with Rizik. Now, I, I've seen him fight. I didn't catch his series, his season of Tough. I have seen him fight in WSOF. Thank you, guys. And what's going on, MMA Power Hour? I'm Dana Bloon from the Asian MMA Podcast here in Bangkok, Thailand, with an Asian MMA update for you. Now, we had some good action going down over the weekend, and we had a new fighter signing. So we're going to get into a bunch of stuff, but we got to start in Japan with Deep 89 Impact. And good card overall. It was fun. I, I enjoyed it. Um, really, two fights that stood out to me. And the first one was the main event. And we had uh, Satoshi Yamasu overcome a lot of adversity early on um, from his opponent, Dakihara, who really came out throwing. And he, he was just trying to take it to him and, and get that finish. And Yamasu is able to, you know, make it through the first round, recovers, comes out in the second, and Hada's doing the same thing. He's coming in hard, um, you know, and really, really pushing for the finish when Yamasu ends up landing a hook floors Hada, jumps on top of him, and just starts putting in work to get that finish. And was able to get the TKO stoppage in the second. You know, was able to uh, retain the belt, you know, keep going forward. It, it was a quick finish, and it definitely, you know, once he landed that hook and floored him, I thought he was going to jump on and start to go for, like, the rear naked choke. And for whatever reason, he just decided to put him away with some ground and pound. Now, another interesting fight on this card, we saw Trevor Jones from Guam take home a second-round submission win by a rare naked choke against Takafumi Atsaka. Good fight, just really, you know, quick finish in the second and solid submission, really dominant performance by uh, Trevin. And, you know, I, I look forward to seeing him again. It was a good, good fight. And once he got the choke sunk in, I really, you could tell that it, it wasn't getting out. And other news, and this is interesting for those of you who follow Risen, is that we had Road FC, World Series of Fighting, and tough veteran Jay Cohen sign a multi-fight deal with Risen. Now, I, I've seen him fight. I didn't catch his, series, his season of tough. I have seen him fight in WSOF. I've seen him fight in Road FC. and so. I'm a fan, and of course, he's a big dude, and his style is such a good fit for Risen. You know, that, that kind of, you know, just aggressive, violent style. And I, I love what Risen's doing, and I, I love this signing. I think this is going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see who his first opponent is going to be under this new contract. So, good, good things to look forward to. Now, we got to jump over to Bangkok, and we had one championship held their Warriors of Light card. This was a Muay Thai heavy card, and uh, I actually did a full breakdown of this card on the Asian MMA podcast with my friend Leon Jennings, so if you guys want to check out the full breakdown of sort of everything that went on outside the MMA space of this, you can check that out. Now, th there's three real fights on this card that, that I want to talk about um, that, that were MMA, and the first one that, that actually shocked me, I, I wasn't particularly excited or not excited for this fight but what ended up happening was was just masterful and we had uh shoku satu facing off against uh mark abadalo uh from fairtex and satu just looked phenomenal the way he controlled the timing the way he controlled you know the distance and the angles he really made mark look like he was an amateur, and Mark has been on like a five or six fight winning streak. Mark is a monster, and he just came out, and Sato was able to shut down everything that, that Mark had. At times, Mark was just swinging, completely missing. Now, it was, it, it was insane, and they made it into the second round, and, um, and Sato was able to get the stoppage. Now, I think this stoppage was, was early. I mean, and it wasn't like a little bit early. It really felt like it was offensively early. And we even saw Mark arguing with the referee as soon as it was stopped. That being said, I don't want to take anything away from, from Sato. I mean, he looked amazing. And if he continues to fight like this, where he can 
he can control that distance and timing on fighters and really confuse them, then a lot of people in this division have something to worry about in one championship because Sato looked unreal. So, you know, despite the questionable stoppage, I don't want to take anything away from him. It was a phenomenal performance. Uh, another fantastic fight on the card was Ponksery versus Robin Cotillon. Now, I- I've seen Ponksery fighting for years in Thailand on the, on the circuit here. And he's always really been a, a striking-focused fighter. I mean, he's got a Muay Thai background. In this fight, his skill set looks so much more well-rounded. Just the way he moved was m- much more like an MMA fighter. There was a couple scrambles on the ground. He looked phenomenal. It seems like he's really taken his, his training and his commitment to the sport to, to the next level. And that, that may very well be due to him being down at Tiger Muay Thai that the change of scenery may have reinvigorated this for him. Now, he was able to really control uh, Robin in this fight with the clinch and just punish him with knees. And he ended up getting the stoppage on body strikes with knees. But if you've ever seen a Muay Thai fighter control someone like that with their knees, with, with the clinch, and, and just drill knees into them, you'll understand. I mean, it's, a, it's a thing of beauty. And the way Ponksery does, he's just so good at that Muay Thai clinch and that type of grappling. And you could tell that, you know, Robin was just a fish out of water, and it wasn't long before Ponksery got the stoppage. Now, the fight I was most excited for on this card, I mean, this is the fight I was looking forward to just from a, a, pure, a pure fight fan perspective, was um, Adrian Pang versus uh, Katsuki Tokyodome. And Adrian Pang is an absolute monster. If you've, if you've ever seen him fight, he's, he's a brawler, he's violent, and you know, he's just aggressive. And that's one of the things I really love about watching Adrian fight is, is that pure aggression he takes to it. And it, it just seems like you know, Katsuyu was always able to kind of short-circuit that and stall it out on him. Adrian was never able to really get it going. And, and that's unfortunate because... It, it could have been fireworks. It absolutely could have, but Kazuki kept touching him up and he ended up opening a cut on uh, Adrian's forehead. And, you know, they broke, they were against the fence, they broke, and the referee jumped in to, to stop it to have the doctor take a look because of, of where the cut was located, I'm assuming. And as soon as the doctor saw the cut, he waved it off. Now, one of the things One Championship does, if you, if you watch it online when they stream it or you have TV in the US, with a TNT, I think they're on. Uh, they don't show the injuries, and they so they don't show it, and you don't get to see the cut, and, which is unfortunate. I mean, because you, you kind of you can't judge for yourself. But I talked to uh, my friend Leon, who was actually at the event, the, and was talking to Adrian the next day, and he said his whole face was just wrapped up, and he was wearing sunglasses. I, I'm assuming it was it was pretty bad. Um, those are really the only fights that, from an MMA perspective, that stood out on that card. Uh, the main event was uh, Nango versus Suzuki for a Muay Thai championship, and it, it was probably the most one-sided fight of the night. Great fight. I mean, it was an absolutely technical clinic. Nango is a monster, and Suzuki is, is tough. But it, it was a very MMA-like card for, for one championship. However, I think that's what they have to do to get eyeballs in Thailand with from local fans. And if that's what they have to do to get eyeballs from local fans and they get to see a little bit of MMA in the meantime, I'm okay with that. You know, cause next week they have this amazing card in Singapore, which is stacked stacked. I'll be covering that. You'll hear about that here on the MMA power hour next week for sure, because that that's going to be the highlight of next weekend. Now, uh, if you guys are in the U S of course they have a TV deal, but if you happen to have a VPN, of course you can, you can still watch it on YouTube. Anyway, guys, that is all I have. I'm going to kick it back over to my colleagues at the MMA power hour, and I will see you next week.
You are awesome. Really, really appreciate all the great work you do, brother. Thank you so much, direct from Thailand, one of the most respected MMA commentators and, uh, and journalists in Asia. So Dana Bluen, thank you so much. Also, I was remiss in not thanking our mates early on, two very respected journalists in the United Kingdom from Scotland, John McElroy, and from London, England, uh, Mr. Chris Allen. So all three of you are so valued and appreciated and, and you know thank you so much and i hope you guys like the work that they do and uh you know they're just you know really important parts of our team along with me dr adam rorta and our whatever the hell the reflective audio supervisor <laughs> da, conceptual moo, conceptual reflective audio supervisor moo who's not here otherwise moo. you'd hear moo and thank you that was dr adam rorta mooing but it still sound, sounded good dr adam rorta what uh, what the heck can we say all kinds of excitement going we still have time left be uh, here between uh, Dana Bluen and uh, and uh, our next guest of about maybe 20 minutes uh, or so. Uh, what shall we do? What shall we do? That was an old comedy line. Do should I see if our guy might want to join us a little bit early, Doc? What do you think? Uh, if you want to, go ahead. I, I'd say, yeah. See. Yeah, why not? Let's see. And if not, then we will uh, come up with a bunch of great uh, witty repartee. Uh, okay, and Macy is very happy she's coming next week and apologizes again for not making it up today. Something urgent came up. Uh, and um, and so let's go. Let's say something, Moo. I mean, say something, uh, Dr. Adam Wolfman Lionfist. Cri cryptocurrency, what's the next stop? Where, oh, where will Bitcoin end up here? Do we want to divulge that, Doc? Or, uh, or no, is that a, no, 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 I'm not divulging my money making no. secrets. You don't, you don't want the hate mail uh, coming in in case you're wrong. No, oh, I, don't think geez, I had that for a while. And no, I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. Um, let me finish typing this over to Macy. Say something uh, very witty, Doc. I don't have anything witty to say uh, today. You're killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> my brain has been fried lately. So oh, God, I hear you. Well, you know, you know, I'll tell you something funny. Someone told me. I have a a friend who uh, said that Kentucky Fried Chicken isn't using real chicken anymore. And I said, Why would you say that? And he said, Notice they just call themselves KFC. It's not Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. But I looked on the one near me, and it still says Kentucky Fried Chicken. So I'm stumped. I don't know. Can it, <laughs> is it not? Is it? It sure tastes like chicken. Now the screen is out. Whoop, Dr. Adam Rorda, the whole thing is dark on the screen. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to figure that out. People, okay. Am I still on the air? Um, so everybody is still on the air. And there I've we go. And I've got a screen here. Excellent. So the Roar Master is roaring in, and this is good. The light looks good here. Okay. So uh, let me see. Uh, let me see if our next guest might want to no, come I, I'm not no, set here. Not so set you yet, got no. <laughs> yeah, Well, if you want to go ahead and ask him, Colin, you can. I yes. have to figure something out here while you're doing that. No, All right. I stepped so, away, but yes i am over here he is trying over to there. fix some stuff boys and girls he is gonna fix some stuff guaranteed okay let me check this here hey andrew would you like to come on uh 10 minutes early perhaps question mark we can be ready for you at 7 10 instead of 7 20 or 8 10 instead of 8 20 your time if so question mark let me see here. <laughs> uh, Today, today's one of those days, boys and girls. You saw I missed it earlier. I muted the wrong mic, and you heard some of our conversation. That was very unintentional, but uh, it does happen. So uh, thank you for hanging in there with us while we're doing all this stuff, like I've been saying. Thank you so much for the likes, comments, and shares. It means the yes. world to us, especially when we have episodes like this. You make us feel so much better when our view count just goes way up and we haven't had the best uh, production technically. Uh, you know, Colin's always knocking it out of the park me being a one-man show operating like three or four different things at once it can be kind of uh, difficult to keep up with everything but uh, we, we do what we can and, and we have some amazing switchers set up and, and uh, uh, it's just a process so everybody that stays in here and hangs out with us it means the world to us especially me when I'm the one kind of yeah, I have some technical issues because of how I'm switching as a one-man show. It's something that can be done and repeated and, and improved upon uh, with the help of others, but uh, it's just a lot of work. So it means a lot when you hang out and actually give us compliments and help us get that mute count up. It really does. We really appreciate it. Now, Doctor, I'm, I'm looking at a completely blank uh, monitor, but uh, as far as you're aware, I'm still on camera and, uh, and, um, and can be heard. Is that right? 
Absolutely. Okay, I, I see nothing in front of me. But anyway, uh, nothing we, at all. Nothing at all. Okay. So, but we, uh, assuming we're still on here, uh, we are very happy that we have Moo here. But Moo is actually running the grid for the city of Los Angeles, so he's having to make sure people's electricity. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's doing other stuff. He's supervising uh, other things, and Dr. Adam Rorta is pretty much handling this himself here. Do you uh, see anything right now? No, I see nothing on the uh, monitor at all. Okay, well, I'm going to put you on. You go ahead and carry some conversation for a moment and uh, I will uh, be back boys and girls but I got to fix this monitor for Colin we just had a major glitch for some reason all right yep so I'm gonna pretend or I think that I may still be on here so uh, let me see let me re re refer to my notes here uh, what does this nothing okay <laughs> That's fine. I should have a cup of coffee here or some uh, act like, you know, like in the old TV shows where someone's sneaking a cigarette. I don't smoke, but it'd be funny. Uh, okay, so we are looking at Henry Cejudo against Marlon Marias. This is coming June 8th. This is not the next card or the one after that, but June 8th. Really looking forward to that. Actually, I, I do digress or I do get ahead of myself. Uh, the Sweden card with our good friend Tanya Evinger against the elbow queen Lena Landsberg is going to be the card after this Saturday. Saturday. Really looking forward to Tanya uh, showing what she can do and uh, and getting her first UFC win. So Tanya Evinger uh, by ground and pound is my pick against the very uh, tough and skillful and charismatic uh, Lena Landsberg from Sweden. Swedish girls not known for being especially tough, but Lena is someone that has disproven that. And, uh, and so from this point on, as far as I'm concerned, Swedish girls are very tough. Lena Landsberg is a true badass. The elbow queen, all respect to you but Tanya Evinger for the win Henry Cejudo against Marlon Marias uh, Dr. Adam Rorta you can talk off screen I don't know you can't really concentrate no he's got to look at the other stuff uh, Henry Cejudo has been killing it at 125 uh, edging out Demetrius Johnson in a fight I saw um, live and in person and, and could have gone either way but really excited he's a great fighter at 135 he's definitely short in stature not that that means the world but uh against uh, marlon marias you know that's gonna be tough marlon has just been just hitting it out of the park smashing everybody and uh is a, a really really exciting fighter he is actually favored i think over cejudo because this is going to be at 135 so dr adam Rora, now that you're back i know you love henry cejudo but when you take him out of his weight class put him up 10 pounds against someone who is arguably the best bantamweight out there today who's been absolutely annihilating everybody what is it what does cejudo do in that situation hmm. uh, i mean this is a tough one i i think he's going to perform very well uh do i think it's going to be as <sighs> It's not going to yeah, be easy. If he... Well, it's not going to be easy, but I don't know. Maybe it is for him at the end of the day. Uh, he came out and surprised previously. I think he's going to maintain, but I think it's going to be a tougher fight than his last one. Yeah, I think so too. I think Marias may catch him a few times. Uh, Cejudo is going to have to be super on point with his wrestling. And, uh, you know, it's it's an exciting fight. Marias is favored and could base, could bot possibly and, and maybe win this. I've got to think more about it. It's June 8th. I'll throw a pick out there uh, before then, but I, I like both guys a lot, both very talented, respectful, and uh, respectable uh, uh, fighters and individuals. Um, Valentina Shevchenko against Jessica I, the evil eye from Ohio, Midwest girl, against the bullet Valentina Shevchenko, the girl from the Eastern Bloc, uh, Russia, or one of the, uh, the countries there nearby, speaks fluent Spanish, having lived and trained for years in Peru, and uh, just a super charismatic, tough uh, woman. I really like Valentina Shevchenko. Jessica I, though, really tough too. And Jessica I loves striking. 125 seems to be a great weight class for Jessica I. Uh, on the ground, Jessica showed some chops a year and a half ago when she went back and forth with Juliana Pena on the ground, losing a decision, uh, I believe, but hanging in there. And Pena is a pretty good grappler. So uh, I think that, uh, that it would be interesting if it goes to the ground and on the feet, Jessica can handle herself.
Uh, Shevchenko, a huge favorite. So anyone that believes in the, the Midwest uh, power of the evil eye got some money. Not that I ever encourage betting or gambling, but if you're going to do it anyway with money you can afford to lose, uh, could make some good money if Jessica I uh, can land a couple shots there and possibly hurt the bullet Valentina Shevchenko. Uh, odds makers say that's unlikely, though, but, you know, hard to uh, hard to say. Um, uh, creak in my neck there. Got him. Okay. Uh, Cowboy Cerrone against Tony Ferguson. Man, what? I don't know. Cowboy comes up with a big win against Al Quinta that I did not expect. Um, and at, what, 37 years old or whatever he is, having been a pro for, what, 16 years or something, they give him, what, two months rest after the Ally Quinta fight and throw him in there against the boogeyman, El Kukui, Tony Ferguson. Granted, Ferguson is coming off uh, an injury for about a year, but man, I, I, I don't, they don't, they don't want to do uh, Cowboy any favors, do they, to reward him for, for being one of the biggest names in their promotion and killing it. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see Cowboy winning uh, that fight. What you, about you? You don't? No. I do. You see Cowboy beating Tony Ferguson. I, I do. I, I think Cowboy's been on a roll. He just really has been. He's one of the toughest guys. He's really proven himself time and time again as one of the toughest guys. And I, I mean literally going out there, being able to take a beating, being able to hand a beating. He, he's just phenomenally strong when it comes to uh, pain tolerance. And, and I, I think... He has the ability to take Tony here. I, I don't put Tony on quite the pedestal. A lot of fight fans do. I, I just think that Tony is, is not quite the pedigree that, that he's made out to be by a majority of folks. Uh, he, he's won some great fights. He's had some uh, great uh, people that he's uh, defeated. But I, I think Cowboy uh, it deserves a little more recognition than he's been given. And I, I think this last fight that he had really kind of stepped it up for him, which got him this fight. But it's... But that's just a six-week turnaround. I mean, even though he was controlling the fight with Ally Quinta, he did take some abuse. He did take some punishment. And and it's not like he's 25 years old. I literally think he's, he's older than you. He's like 36, 37, I think, or somewhere around there. Or anyway... I don't know. I, I, if he can, if he can pull this off, then they should give him Conor McGregor. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe the fact that he went up at, to welterweight and and was just you know out muscled up there, and now that he has a new baby, he's fighting for. Uh, he's got that motivation. It's a re reinvigorated cowboy at 55. Uh, could happen. I don't think so, though. I think uh, El Kukui Ferguson uh, all day in this fight. And I, yeah, I, I, you can I, call I, me Kukui for thinking that El Kukui <laughs> was going to lose to Cowboy. But Coo hey. Yeah. It, it, One of us will turn out to be Kukui or Kuku. Kukui <laughs> is a boy. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I got you on that. Uh, but uh, but we shall see. And then uh, DC against going up against Stipe down the line. Um, you know, a lot of interesting stuff going on and, uh, you know, but, uh, we're, we're excited to, uh, to be, uh, involved in the sport. We still have a few minutes left. So, okay. Dr. Adam Rorta, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, so Kevin Lee, you got Aspen against Cijara, Megan Anderson against Felicia. Okay. Let's talk about that for a few minutes. Then we can bring our, our guest on Megan and Felicia. Here's where that division stands. Amanda Nunez, the champ champ said she doesn't have interest in, in going back to 145. Uh, Tanya Evinger gave me news that she saw somewhere that Amanda said, however, for $3 million, she'll fight Cyborg again in the rematch. And apparently there's a there's a, an issue with that, which there shouldn't be. I think it's insane that they wouldn't make sure that Amanda, their, their double champ gets comped uh, to fight Cyborg. But if they don't, then the UFC is not wanting someone to be able to tie up more than one title and amanda is fighting holly Holm in about a month at bantamweight so this could conceivably be a vacant women's featherweight title whoever wins between megan and felicia is looking at what is looking at 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 possibly fighting cyborg for the vacant title which probably should happen if amanda doesn't want to do it. in fact i like that if amanda if they can't make the fight with amanda and cyborg rather than seeing cyborg out of the organization oh, excuse me out of the organization 
I, I think she should get an immediate rematch and an immediate shot back at her title. And if it's not against uh, against Amanda, then it, sh it should be against whoever. So my feeling is if Amanda's not ready, and, and not only that, but she's going to have a pretty tough fight with Holly. So I, I, I'm going to go out right here and say I have a feeling that they're not going to make the Amanda Cyborg fight in time enough uh with the time that that amanda is going to need after holly so i believe the winner of felicia versus megan is fighting cyborg for the title and that could be somewhere by the end of the year do you uh do you agree with that or you think that that somehow they they will make the the uh uh amanda nunez versus cyborg fight even though amanda's fighting in a month uh, I, I don't think they'll go ahead and make that fight. I think they want to wait until Amanda versus Holly pans out well, one way or the other. Right. Uh, they'll see who wins that fight. Right? Yeah. I mean, if Holly wins it, then... It, it, then Amanda might willingly jump right up to 45. Yeah. I mean, she, she's going to want to at that point. Right. Because she's going to yeah. now be dethroned in a way that's... Uh, I mean, yeah, she won so decisively this last time against Cyborg, but if she can't repeat that or at least defeat Holly here, it... it it isn't quite as dominant as as she appeared that first time uh, in this weight class going against uh, cyborgs. So. Right, which is which could very well happen. I think Holly is live in that fight. Oh, I do too. I yeah. I think she's live in comparison. So I, I, she's just not a good matchup for for Amanda and right. not in the way that uh, you would want to be <laughs> right right for yeah you know could amanda beat holly she she sure could but i think it's going to be a rough fight yeah you're right about that so if amanda loses if amanda loses but and, and then remember medical suspensions are an issue as well if amanda loses and but doesn't get cut up really bad or injured badly and doesn't have one of these six month medical suspensions or whatever if that does not occur excuse me i would think that amanda would say uh hey i'm good i'm ready in three months to, to defend my featherweight title against the winner of uh, or, of either or either Cyborg or Megan versus Felicia and maybe not demand as much money since she will have come off a loss. But then that that brings up the question: If UFC says you got to pick a title that you're going to defend and we're going to strip you of the other title, have they already stripped her of the featherweight title, being that she's defending? her bantamweight title against Holly? I would think so. I haven't read that, but once in a while something gets by me. I would think if they're going by the letter of the UFC law, so to speak, <laughs> she will already have been stripped. But maybe I'm wrong. It'd be interesting if they say, well, they were just deciding what to do and then they can delay doing that until after the fight so then they can say well we actually had not quite stripped her so now she can defend her uh her featherweight title either way i think the winner of uh, megan and felicia is going to be uh if not the next fight for the featherweight title then um then possibly one fight away and by one fight away meaning if it just involves the cyborg and uh and, and amanda nunez rematch then they may not even have to fight again and just wait it out until uh, they're given the green light to face the winner. Absolutely. Well, I can tell you it's only become more of an interesting area when it comes to all things MMA related. Just checking out the new weight classes. And I remember two years ago, Colin, we were talking about Cyborg and her potentially not having anybody. Now you look at this weight class, the Bantam weight weight class. and it's featherweight weight class, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's stacked. And yeah. I, I'm just... It, it, Compared to then, it's stacked. I don't want people to to be shocked at what they're hearing. Bantamweight is looking pretty good. Featherweight better than it was, Adam, for sure. Not to cut you off, but stacked. I think might be going a little further than what most people think. But in all honesty, you're right. It was Cyborg before, and then with no one, and then Megan came. They had Jermaine, Jermaine Durand to me, who wouldn't fight Cyborg, and went right back down to 35. So she was out. Anyway, is that our next guest skyping us? It sure is. Let's uh, let's answer it. Hi. What's happening? Can you hear me, Andrew Tennyson? Hey, how's it going, guys? Dude, going very, very well. Thank you for Skyping in. We were just about to Skype call you. Welcome oh. back to the show. It's been nearly two years, hasn't it? Two years? Oh, no. Hard to... I'm, I'm getting older. Uh, no, no. You still look <laughs> the same as you did before. Do you still have that Yoda backpack? Yeah, he's hidden somewhere, though. But, uh, you know, it's episode... Uh seven right he passed away i'm sorry the spoiler that for oh you, that's right one with the force oh man well well may the force be with you uh anyway andrew tennyson 
It, it, it was it was Friday night. <laughs> yes, it was, and <laughs> uh, and I am super excited as a purple belt in jujitsu myself. Uh, I'm not that you are that because I would imagine maybe you're a higher belt if you want to disclose that. You don't have to if you don't want to, but. Oh. Oh no 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 no! I never I never no. like talking about belts. No need, no need about belts. Pants up but or whatever. It, right, exactly. But I I love when I see a go go planta. The last time I saw one was uh, was if you probably remember uh, Nick Diaz over in Pride, I think against Takanori Gomi. And oh, that was that was that was a lot of go go platas ago. Yes, it was for many. Me, yeah. For me, I'll tell you I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you a little story right now. Love to hear. I'll it. go on a little narrative. So I started just watching YouTube. Like, man, this is great. I'm gonna learn how to do this. Sakuraba? Oh wow, this is great. I'll learn my Kimura from him. Shinya Aoki, what's this crazy guard he's doing? He got a Gogo Plata from the mount. I didn't know you could do that. How does he do that? Let me figure this out. Nice. That was 2009. That was 10 years ago. Love it. Love and it. I learned so many new techniques since then. Yeah. I've been, since then, I joined Jackson Wink. I learned so, just so much. I grew so much as a martial artist. Yet somehow, during the fight Friday night for LFA, I went through all these new techniques that I had learned to get to a position where I went all the way back to almost the genesis of me learning how to grapple. I love that. But it, it was it was insane. I didn't think I'd ever get one of those in a fight. That it, it's rare. It really is rare. And kudos to you. Obviously, when someone gets uh, a Gogo Plata in an MMA, MMA fight, uh, they're not a white belt. So we don't have to talk about belts anymore. But that was that was impressive. Were you were you looking at all for that at any point in the fight, or did you just see the opportunity right when it presented itself? Um, there's there's this great thing that Greg talks about, Greg Jackson. Mm -hmm. That after you learn all the basics and of the tactics and the strategies and then also just the techniques, that within that is where you get the practice, the art form. Yes. So it almost becomes less of a science and more of an art the more into it you get. And that was a very specific situation and a very specific time. There was short time left in the fight. I'm a shorter fighter mounting a taller fighter. And the taller fighter is putting his arms at a certain place. His torso is very long. His neck's very long. Yep. So it was all these things that just matched together. And the way he shifted his body after um, I landed a few strikes is just, it was there. There was no, it was, I was like, oh, this is where I go for that. Nice. It, it's almost like uh, Krillin was ready to throw the spirit disc or whatever. He's like, when do I throw it? Nice. Right? They're like, you'll know when to throw it. Love it. And I had years of not even doing that technique. Like I do it every once in a while in the gym, yeah. but not like really draining, uh, drilling it hard. Um, it just was available. And because it was in my head written down, I was able to just go to this old tune that I used to play. And yeah, it worked. Really love lucky. it. I love that. It was really impressive. And now correct me if I'm wrong, because I've watched it a couple of times, but I've had a lot go on and people visiting me from out of town unexpectedly. So forgive me. But uh, I, I believe it started from the mount and you finished it from the bottom, right? Yeah. So it was cool because he went for this cool choke that he can get because his arms are really long and because he's good at it. He's, he's obviously trained it a lot. And so I'm like, man, I'm not going to get stuck in this choke. Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm stuck. So I had the role to get out. And I think of a chess metaphor where I'm giving up a knight or a bishop or by, uh, killed by his pawn. Right. You know, it's, it's, like a, it's like a step backwards, but I have to do it because I'm in check. So I lose a piece by losing position. I'm able to go for a triangle. There's an omoplata. Then he goes for... Um, a triangle himself I go back for a leg lock so I'm going for leg locks on these long legs and I'm not the best at leg locks um, against that body type yeah and I'm not the best at leg locks period I need to do better at some like minor details and high level jits guys will like tear it apart I'm like I know where my wrist should be and I know I should attack the toes better going back but in the moment I'm like that I just can't get it yeah yeah especially slippery and, it makes it even harder but anyway go ahead yeah, yeah and it was just it was just something was off, and I feel like I matured as a fighter because I was able to say, you know what? Let's just use this leg lock attempt to pass. Nice. And what? I was able to pass, and I was able to get mount. So 
it was a lot of, as I said, it was a lot of different techniques that have been building over the years, and then it went all the way back to something original. And it, and the stand-up game was great. I felt good on the feet. Yeah. So that was, uh, I was worried about really getting hurt. He he cut me a little bit. I don't know if you can see, Tiny but bit, it yeah. didn't need stitches. Good. Uh, just an old scar, you know, scar tissue gets like a little bop, and suddenly it's yep. opened up. Yep. Question no, for I didn't get hurt. Not, I, good. I like that, and I was impressed by your striking as well. Uh, question for you: When you transitioned with the Gogo Plata from the mount to the guard to the bottom, uh, did you did you go do that yourself, or did he roll you and you just went with it to go oh, uh, on the bottom? Yeah, he so rolled that he I I I go for it. I'm trying to get it from mount, but I have no base on one side because that's the leg that's now against his throat. Right. Yeah. And so with and both hands are occupied trying to apply the choke. So you completely have no base on one side. And he he has to you have to torque quite a bit to get me the roll, but he rolled right into it and then that frees my other leg to go on top and then join the fight basically. Yeah. So he he moves from one situation which feels pretty bad and he almost ends up in a worse situation. Right, right. But he has to do that. Yeah, because the only escapes are going to be when he has gravity. He's able to now push down on that um, foot that's going into his neck. He can now push down on it when he's laying on his back. He can't really bench it away, and I'm laying on top of it, so I have all this extra pressure pushing down. So it's 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 a um, it damn if you do, you damn if you don't kind of yeah. position. If I already have it in. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree. Uh, real, some really good jujitsu 101. I really appreciate that. It's reminiscent to me of an old, old match way back in the early UFC, <clears throat> the first match that Chuck Liddell had with Jeremy Gumby Horn. I don't know if you remember yeah. Jeremy Horn. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And Gumby was. He hated that nickname. Yeah, yeah, but he was amazing, man. He had what 100 MMA fights and one like no, he had like 150 MMA fights and won like 130 yeah. of them or something. But I was uh, talking. Is that about, like one of those Iowa boys that just like oh yes. Fought, like yes. every weekend or yes something? indeed yes yeah. indeed he was amazing and uh part of the militich uh, fighting systems militich elite pat militich i had pat on the show a few times the last time i had him on the show or maybe the time before that i asked him i said he was doing the arm triangle choke uh choke that wrestlers love he wasn't a wrestler but he was doing an arm triangle choke anyway uh from the top uh on chuck liddell and he was uh he was on mount first and he, i think he jumped over to the correct side but he all of a sudden they switched positions and he was on his back and yeah, I, I had yeah. thought I, I remember that right I remember that now that you say that right and I, I had stood right there on his back right I thought he did that but Pat told me no the Chuck was a better wrestler than Jeremy and a bigger man so he rolled Jeremy but when he rolled Jeremy Jeremy already had it locked and was able to tighten the figure four on the triangle arm triangle choke from the bottom. And I remember back then, a lot of people thought that when Chuck reversed him, Chuck was then winning or about to, you know, posture up and start smashing him. But remember, this was 20 years ago, so people didn't know as much of it. But yeah, not at all. He was locked in that. And, and in a transition, whether you're going from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top, a transition will allow you frequently to tighten uh, a submission, you know, and uh, and that's what he did. So no, that's awesome that you, you did that. He rolled you and just rolled into something worse. That was fantastic. Were you confident? At what point were you confident that you had it? Right from the top uh, or, or after he rolled you? Or, or only the very last second when he tapped? Um, the funny thing was that I kind of got it against Sanhagen, but I was uh, just exhausted at that point, and, and I didn't apply the technique pressure in the back of the head. And I remember Ron Kruk yelling in, behind me, because it, it was like three years ago or whatever, yes, and it was yes. RFA. So Ron Kruk was there. He was there this night, um, and I could, couldn't hear him this night in my head, or it, in the background, but that last time I did, and like tennis is going for Gogo Plata with 30 seconds left, and I'm like, wow, this is I'm going for Gogo Plata <laughs> with 30 seconds left. Oh, wow. <laughs> you heard, heard it. I think I think the Sanhagen one was third round. This one was first round. Right. But it was still deja vu. Yeah. For me, like yeah. that, I'm like, oh, I'm going for this submission again, and I remember why the other one didn't work, and I worked it a lot after that. And so nice. I was like. Just squeeze the head down more. Yes. And you'd get and you'd get it. And so when I was in that position and my shin was under his neck, I just 
I just was concentrated on that. Yeah. Also, yeah. I didn't mind that it if it didn't work, that's okay. Yep. What you don't want to do is emotionally tie yourself to certain things. Like right. Right. If I emotionally tied myself to keep on striking with him, or if I emotionally tied myself to getting that leg lock that I tried multiple times and adjusted, and I kept adjusting. But if it wasn't working, I shouldn't tunnel vision on it. Absolutely. So I was ready to go into something else, or I was ready for time to go out, or I was ready to go for another two rounds if necessary. But yeah, I just, when I thought he tapped, he did it like this little early tap, but because his hand was kind of trapped. Yeah. I felt like a jerk because I'm like, did he tap? Right. I yeah. like go in training, right? Yeah. But until that ref stops it, I ain't letting go. No, you can't. You so can't. I, yeah. so, I, so I'm holding and I'm holding until the ref and then like you see my head just turn when I know for sure this is a visible tap. You got to see this, right, yes. ref? Yes. And um, when the ref came over, then I was like, yeah. Yeah. But until that moment, I didn't believe the choke was going to work in right. the sense that I didn't want to have like emotional connection investment. yeah right you don't want to be married to it which is very good very good philosophy in fighting and in jujitsu uh speaking about Corey sanhagen i want to throw out that he's the only guy that beat you out of nine mma fights and he is killing it in the ufc right and and, and, and that, that was a close was, fight with you yeah it was a really it was my worst fight <laughs> <laughs> and i was like feeling horrible i weighed in three pounds underneath but man this guy he was catching my kicks and throwing me down and avoiding all these submission attempts, and I'm like, okay, well, well you, do. you didn't do too well, but he did really good. Yeah, but and, and so and the fact that he's gone four zero in the UFC since. Yeah, this I'm is like, yeah. I'm this, like, okay, yeah. This I guess I'm not too bad. Exactly, cool. and and I, I hope and I think other people are seeing that because he's done he's beaten people in the UFC uh, much easier than he had uh, getting a decision uh, win from you. So uh, this I, I didn't get finished by right. Van Hagen. That's, That's right, it, right? Yes, so, but he's he, he's a really nice guy. We talked afterwards. Cool. Um, yeah, I look forward. I want to actually train with everyone that I've ever fought. With. I like that. I like that. So, like, it's like, yeah, rematch him, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. It'd be great. It's cool if we could, if he could show me that move that he got and I could try to grapple him one more time and see if I can get him. There you go. But I, really, yeah. it's just like, he's a, he was a cool guy. Um, and I'm so happy that he's successful. You wouldn't want your, like, the last person to beat you to, like, lose four in a row. No, that wouldn't look good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I'm the last person he, he beat, and then from then on out, he was dying. You're right. Everyone else like, beats no. him, the crap out of him. Yeah, no, you don't want that. So, no, this is but, good, but it's, but it's a really good sign about what you have. Sorry if I stepped on your words there. But, oh, uh, no, no. What are, are, just, he, he's a nice guy, and, he's, and, and he was really respectful and friendly. And he's doing great, and I'm just happy. And, yeah. and if it reflects well on me, then that's fine. Um, I'm really more interested in what I can show in the cage, yes. Yes. and and what I can like share with my friends and teammates and other people too. Yeah. For me, MMA has to be more than about just fighting. Yeah. It seems like a big waste if it's just all about concussion time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Got a couple other questions for you, but before I do that, I don't know if it's possible, but when you did an interview with us, one of our one of our first uh, ten interviews, I think, my producer, Dr. Adam Rorta, hadn't become my host yet, but he was so impressed with you that for the following year, he would say, "Hey, is this guy the guy with the Yoda backpack? I love that guy." And I'd say, "No, it isn't." You know, and he'd say, is that the guy? And, you know, and finally I'd say, no, I'd say, we're, we're, we're going to have him back. But you, you, Andrew Tennyson, he was so impressed with you. I don't know if he can come on really quick to say he can't, unfortunately. But Adam Rorta, my producer, was a big fan of yours. And he hasn't got you out of his head since uh, 2017. So I just wanted to let you know, not only am I a fan, but my producer is as well and uh, has been for quite a while. You're a well-spoken guy. You have a great sense of humor. And two years ago, uh, you know, you just were, were impressive then. And you are now now off of this great win and the fact that they got to look and see that the only guy that beat you uh is killing it 4-0 in the ufc there has to be some talk about andrew tennyson's going somewhere i know you until something signed you can't discuss it but would you have any preferences out of the big shows whether it was a ufc or bellator or one fc can you give a hint which way you may um, be leaning or anything going on 
my manager wants to talk to me with. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. What you no. can say and what you can't say. Right? I can't. I, I can't say, but I but I will say this. I will say that um, LFA has been great yep. to me. So uh, really thankful for them. But as but I I was I did this really fun, cool behind the scenes like interview with uh, Pat Miletic and Ron Kruk and Phoenix mm -hmm. at, uh, before the fight. Mm -hmm. and I'm nerding out because that's what I do. Yeah, they're awesome. But uh, I was talking about how I just really wanted this next fight to be entertaining, and I wanted to win. That everything was just going into that fight. And so now I'm like, oh, you saw like, I don't know if you guys saw the fight, but I kind of like, I put on the water waterworks afterwards. I was, I was very emotional. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I feel like I'm getting more emotional the older I get. I don't know what it is. I'm turning into my mom. She like would cry during. Right. Like, I hear you. Like commercials with dogs <laughs> that are sad or something. Yep. I can really. And I'm like, what are you doing, yeah, mom? Yeah, I know. Right. And and then we do I'm it. 33. Yep. I turn 33. Five days before the fight or something. So I had to delay my birthday. The um, belated no, happy no, birthday. No birthday cake when you're cutting weight. No, right? I can imagine. And so I'm like, well, I haven't been hurt. I have a successful record. I've My only loss is against an, a, major, a major badass and a nice guy on top of that. Corey Sanhagen. Yeah. Um, like, well, I was in China where I got my cool manager um, mm -hmm. for seven months last year. Um. And and before my November fight against Joey Maiola, I was off for a year and a half from fighting. Yep. And so coaching and talking with people has become a big part of how I grow as a martial artist, not just fighting. For sure. And I don't know whether another fight in LFA for a title, because I've been number one twice now, because mm -hmm. I beat Joey and I became number one, and then I... Uh, beat um Weston Wilson and so still number one and there's a vacant belt so you know or do is it contenders or is it one or is it I don't know I I just fought Friday but I'm already in the gym trying to help people out nice there's um Patchy Mix he's uh an amazing fighter for Bellator mm -hmm. and I really want to help him there's AJ Robb, who's actually the cousin of Adam Martinez, someone else who I fought mm -hmm. in the past, who's a nice guy too. And he's a Jackson Wink. And I'm like, I want to help him out. Nice. You know? And so um, um, there's uh, there's LeVon, and his, who's in uh, LeVon Lewis, who's already in contenders, and there's his brother, Bavon. Mm -hmm. His brother, Bavon's amazing too. Right. Bavon we had on the show. Yeah, we had Bavon on the show. Yeah, Bavon cool. was, 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 was in the show. And then, or is it? Man, uh, Levon's in the show or in the contenders. Contenders and, Levon, and Levon's in the UFC. Right. Yeah. And Levon's in the UFC. Levon's yeah. in the UFC and Levon's gonna get there. It looks that's like that's it. Yep. I think that's it. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And we had Levon like, on our I'm interview. I'm gonna help show. them out. Yeah. Yep. I don't necessarily need the fight to become like the best martial artist I can be. So right. I'm just thinking about it right now. Makes sense. Long it makes sense. So I like that answer, and it shows that you're a, a really introspective and, and, and well thought out person and you're wanting to be the best martial artist you can be and that's really unique. I like that 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 you're saying that, that you don't have to fight to do that and being the best martial artist uh, you can be is that important because that does stand out. I think that, that, that a lot of people lose track of that and I think that's why you're a really interesting guy is because you're very, you know, you're very uh, uh, focused on martial arts and, and being the best martial artist you can be and I'm sure the best person you can be. And I love the fact that you threw out a lot of your focus is helping a couple of your teammates out because that's really neat. A lot of people will have that thought but won't necessarily throw that out there as being prevalent and, 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 and you know of the utmost importance. So big respect uh, to you for, for really having that uh, sort of good heart that helping out your teammates is important. You're over there at Jackson Wink. It's really like a family there, yeah. isn't it? It, it and and it's getting better all the time. We have more people that are coming in. We have uh, dorms that are in there. So if you're a fighter and you want to live and train with the best, you know, um, search Jackson Wink, contact the gym, and you can come and and train. You know, and I'll coach you and I'll teach you everything I know. Yeah, that's... and you can beat me up or I'll beat you up, whatever happens. I love that. But you'll grow and you'll learn and you'll become a better martial artist. Uh, I always think of uh, Shogun versus Machida. Yeah. And I think of how how no one remembers Andre Dita was one of Shogun's main training partners for that fight. Mm -hmm. 
and he was an amazing striker in his own right and he was a good fighter not most mostly in like dream and stuff yep. but people didn't realize that he was the one that was mimicking machida for shogun right Interesting. and so by doing that for months because they fought twice mm -hmm. he ended up helping shogun probably more than almost anyone else could have at the time. Interesting. And if you're that person that's helping somebody become a champion, and I see it, Jackson Wink has some guys that come in and they just help other fighters for their training camps. Mm -hmm. And they're amazing. And they would smoke and destroy UFC fighters if they fought. But they don't. Right. They just help out. Yeah. And um, some of Greg's black belts, uh, Ray Martinez, for example, he's only fought amateur MMA, but I'd put his grappling against anyone in the UFC. Nice. And he has so much that he could teach people in the UFC. Nice. And so if I have that kind of situation in the gym for myself where I'm helping the next generation of amateurs and I'm helping the current generation of pros, I mean, that, and I'm working with the last generation of pros and coaches, then that's great. Yeah. Um, that's going to help me be the best I can be. You know, we say that again and again, but Human flourishing is more important than a paycheck to me. I like that. Very, very well stated. And that's a, that's a great statement that I think people should remember and even write down. You know what I mean? Helping people is, is more important than a paycheck for you. And that's awesome, man. That's the attitude that, that we really need to have out there. And I think uh, in this fight community, the more of us that look out for everyone like our brothers, like I train jiu-jitsu only and um, I, I competed in the last tournament several years ago almost a decade ago I'm getting older I may never again or I might but I'm always there helping and I'm always there wanting to, to help make my teammates better and they are as well it's a great atmosphere and it's an atmosphere where everyone can get better and uh, you know my late father may he rest in peace I throw this out maybe every other show but he always said one of the best things you can do is to help people even if you're up or if you're down you can go out and help people and it'll 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 make things better it'll it'll bring it back to you but less important than bring it back to you it's just the right thing to do i think a lot of times in our society we have a lot of younger people uh younger than you and even 33 compared to me is young that that you know are thinking right how much fun and how many parties they can have in their lifetime is is the measure about how great their life is and i think that it misses the picture the the big picture so much it isn't about how much fun you can have it's about what you can contribute and how you can help people and how you can be a positive influence like i say at the end of our show too i always say spread the love in a positive way right be that guy be that girl and uh you know it'll make the world a better place so really appreciate your your philosophy and your good heart there man i'm sure you're appreciated around the school and uh and you know the fact that you're there willing to help is uh is awesome so either way it sounds like you're going to play it by ear it could be lfa or or ufc or or just you know that could be on hold until you help your partners or, or whatever just whenever it happens uh is okay with you it sounds like right um yeah uh as i said a year and a half without fighting yeah multiple times um my career got delayed essentially by being deployed to Iraq for oh, wow. a year, oh, wow. for about 10 months in country before I started my amateur career. And so it's like these spaces and time are not necessarily really bad things. No. I mean, I, we, they always want you to feel like you're running out of time. You're on a clock to reach the top of the escalator. Right. But I can get off this escalator anytime I want. Yeah. And I can go to this level and stay here or I can keep going to the next level. Um, or I can completely leave the building. Yeah, and and it's and it's really um, comforting that I have that ability. I'm very lucky and privileged that I have that ability, and I feel like top to bottom society needs to think about more like just altruistic kind of views of the yeah. world. Yeah, like how do I how do I help other people? And I feel like the I feel like the younger generation is pretty good about it, especially when it comes to like issues like climate change, where it's like, man, we're going to have to pay more for gasoline, but at least I'm not, you know, destroying the rainforest. And they're yeah. like, wow, that's, that's, that's altruistic, yeah. you know, yep. to a degree. I like um, that. But versus like whether I don't want to pay more taxes or I don't want to volunteer or I don't want to protest or I don't want to help my training partner when he has a camp or I don't want to pick up that piece of trash that I see on the side of the road in my neighborhood because someone gets paid to do that. Um, just little things. And, and they, there's like a butterfly effect, like mentality that you can have. Mm -hmm. 
about it, but in the end, it's like people power. Everyone in the gym who takes a, one extra step to help their teammates makes the whole gym move forward. Um, when all, everyone starts being selfish, you notice the change in the culture. And yeah, it's it's amazing how just little things help yeah. um, and create bigger impacts than we think possible. But that's all of us working together. So it can't just be about one person. No, nope, I agree 100%. Absolutely well stated. Well, you got some great people over there. Holly, who I haven't heard a single person at Jackson Wink say they don't like. Holly Holm has a great well, I'll fight. be the first. So. Oh, no. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're kidding. I know you're kidding. Yeah. So she has that big fight coming up against uh, Amanda Nunez. Love. I, I have nothing against Nunez, but I would love to see uh, another world title along with John Jones uh, at Jackson Wink. So I know you guys are getting excited about that. Diego Sanchez coming off that great win is back in action again uh, soon. Uh, Chris Brown has been unlucky to have nobody be willing to fight him time after time. He had to spend time in my original hometown of Detroit waiting for people to fight him and have it not happen twice. Not that there's anything wrong. I love Michigan, but at least be in Hawaii or somewhere if you're going to be waiting to fight no down in Detroit. You know, I think it's it's a big thing with the sport right now. Yeah, you want you have to have this perfect record. Yeah, to go and reach it to the top. Yeah, and reaching the top's all that matters. And so I have to protect my fighter. I have to protect. Can't take risky fights yeah. early on in your career. And Chris is way better than his uh, early like record will tell you yeah yeah he's amazing yeah and uh one of the best in the gym and he's helping people good you know um a big key to holly getting even better as she keeps going i feel is that uh chris has joined the team and has become an amazing training training partner for her um we also have uh edwin cooper who's an amazing wrestler he's been helping out nice. with, with the amateurs and he's been helping out with the pros when it comes to the wrestling because mm -hmm. he was iowa state i believe yeah and he's he's just made his pro debut, I believe, but I mean Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing people that are helping Holly get ready for her fight. Yeah, that's and great. And she has her normal crew and you see the pictures of her with Izzy and, and Tusa and so you know that she has a legit martial arts background yeah. of people that are supporting her. Absolutely. And whatever kind of plans they come up with to destroy Amanda, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, yeah, it's me too. I, I'm really excited. And that will that will make her, I guess not a double champ, but a two-time UFC champion. Yeah. And not, right, not only that, but both will have been upsets as an underdog, although this mm -hmm. one not as big as a dog as she was to Ronda, but be really, really exciting, and I think that will be great. I still love that level up video that Holly did with Michelle Watterson. Remember like a year ago? That's yeah. freaking awesome. I mean, it's and funny, too, because I, sh I showed my girlfriend, and my girlfriend said, you know, I kind of expected Michelle could move like that, but I didn't think Holly would be dancing like that good. <laughs> it's, it's that boxing. You yeah. Have to be good at, yeah. You have to have good footwork, right? Yeah, yeah. She looked but, great. But she was, a, she was a champion kickboxer, boxer, and MMA yeah. person. Yeah. Like, the only, the only, like, thing she could have done is if she went, you know, ADCC or something, or yeah. One Worlds. Right. Right. And then she'd have like the triple crown. Yeah. I feel like the closest person that ever came to that was uh, Alistair because he right. won an ADCC in Europe. Yep. And he won K1's belt. Yep. And he also won Dream's belt. I yep. think he's been the closest to that bragging. Yeah. Right? He was also Strike Force champion. Yeah. Yep. So he was he was doing really well. But Holly, I mean, her ability to go from two from three, she's done three combat sports, and she's excelled in all of them. And been in the top of all of them. Yeah, yeah. And that just says, you know, uh, I of course think she's going to win, and Amanda could win because Amanda's like really talented as well. And I think I called her beating Cyborg like when I saw her in Strike Force. I'm like, she's the one that's going to yeah, do it. Yeah, I did. I did not from Strike Force. <laughs> I didn't call it that far back, but I called it before that fight. Both Adam and I got had Nunez over Cyborg uh, in the upset, but we didn't but think it'd go like that. She, but she would. She would have to do. She'd have to beat Holly and then continue winning for years. Right. To equal what Holly's accomplished in the sport. Yep. And just not even her accomplishments as a martial artist, but then just her personality. She's a great person. Yeah. Yeah, I heard and that. So, and so, yeah, it's it's really cool to see her get ready. It's cool to see uh, John Jones get ready. And it's cool to see all these other fighters getting ready in the gym and, and all these. We got, I'm telling you guys, come and live with us in the dorms. Uh, it's great there. Uh 
there's a cafe downstairs. You're right there near the bus. You're right there near. We have a big parking lot, and we also have a whole bunch of uh, connections in the community when it comes to meal preps. And you have your kitchen space up there anyway, but also uh, fit fitness gyms and conditioning gyms, and we have our own equipment. It'd be great. Just come and train with me. This yep. is your chance. You're watching me right yeah. now. Yep. You're like, what would it be like to train with this guy? I'll teach you how to do a Mount of Google Plata. Man, I if I wasn't way over 40, <laughs> if I could get in a time machine, then I want to go into the dorms and train with you. I, I'm serious. But unfortunately. Do it and yeah. document it. Yes. 40-year-old man living the life of a 19-year-old MMA fighter. That would be I, awesome. I'd watch that documentary. Yeah, well, that would be awesome. But I think I'm f far enough away from 40 that it might be just, uh, unfortunately, not doable. But we'll see. I appreciate the invite. But for anyone else, he is serious. If you're a fighter out there, you know, uh, and, and you're serious about your career, it's possible you could end up being part of the Jackson Wing team, living in the dorms with all these amazing people. And, and you know, what better could you, uh, could you find than someone that can help coach you and teach you and be your partner and training partner there uh, like Andrew Tennyson. Andrew, what's the best way on social media to hit you up if people actually wanted to maybe ask you what the best way to, to, to contact Jackson Wink would be for um, that or just to say hello and support you? Yeah, in, in, um, Instagram is the best way to contact me. Tennyson MMA. Um, let me see. Here we go. I don't want to stand too much. There we go. Tennyson MMA. Awesome. Boom. Yep. And it's the Monkey King and I in honor of my uh, Chinese students cool. that I had overseas, and it was great. And it has the New Mexico Zia symbols too. But yeah, tennis and MMA at, uh, on Instagram, Twitter, and also Facebook. Message me. I'll try to sell you my cool shirts. Yes. Uh, they're amazing. Awesome. But also just talk to you about, I don't know, political philosophy, mixed martial arts, or just say thank you for supporting me. So yeah. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And uh, Jackson Week is in New Mexico, guys. So if you, if you are close to there or can get there, that would be uh, an amazing place uh, for you to be staying at. You know what I mean? So. Andrew Tennyson, man, it's a pleasure having you back on, man. All respect to you. Amazing go go plot to finish representing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And uh, I'm really excited for you. Whatever you do, let us know. And uh, we'll be strongly uh, behind you as always. I will. And um, thank you uh, to everyone from Greg, uh, the Wink, to Joey, to Frank, to Nate Harris and 10th Planet System that helped me get the better at the go go platas. Um, Eddie Bravo for his books, but just every training partner that I've had um, my whole entire career and before my career even started. Thank you guys so much. Awesome. My team, love you guys. I'm sure they uh, appreciate you and I uh, love you a lot as well. So thanks for throwing that out there. Thank you so much, Andrew Tennyson. Always a pleasure, my friend. I'll be excited to see whatever happens next, if it's the LFA or the big show. And I know in the meantime, you're helping uh, your team there. So man, keep up the great work. Let us know what you do and, uh, and uh, we'll be cheering for you, brother. Thank you. You have a nice day. You Be too. Safe, everybody. Thank you, my friend. You too. Take care. And that was Andrew Tennyson, Dr. Adam Rort, a super cool guy. We finally had him back, as you were saying. Is that the guy with it? Yes, we finally, <laughs> this is the guy. Andrew <laughs> this, Tennyson had the Yoda the backpack. Guy. Yes. And uh, what a cool guy, man. I would love to see this guy in the UFC because he's so unique. He's so you know, thoughtful and, and plugged in to the spiritual and the true martial arts uh, philosophy, man. I would just love to see this guy in the mix. And if you really look at it, right, the guy's eight and one, he's fought pretty darn good opponents. Uh, LFA has people that are no joke. And the only guy that beat him, as we said, Corey Sandhagen, who's four and oh, killing it in the UFC, stopping people left and right and barely got by Andrew Tennyson and, and Andrew said it wasn't even really a good night for him not to make an excuse but Andrew Tennyson for the UFC please Sean Shelby Mick Maynard get on it talk to Ed Suarez make it happen we know you guys watch yeah you know what I mean absolutely we've, we've noticed over the last couple of years we know you're watching so yes. get, get Andrew in there yes it'll really be worth it he'll he'll get a big following and, and just you know 
he's like the anti Conor McGregor, but I think he would bring a lot of good fans on and have a lot of fun and, and, and just bring great karma to the UFC. So WME IMG, karma, great business, equals Andrew Tennyson. Bring him in. Uh, if not, then Bellator or title fight in the LFA, whatever it takes, man. But at 33, I think his shelf life is pretty good. He's got time left, and he'll make stuff happen, and I'm uh, you know, really looking forward to it. So, Doc, clock on the wall, I think, is saying we're wanting to wrap it up, or do we have a few minutes? I think not, right? Well, real quick before we go, I want to say thank you, Colin, for always bringing some great information to the show. You're one of the most knowledgeable people in the MMA community. Thank you. Uh, you really do uh, let every person know uh, in a very uh, teachable way uh, how much you know. I mean, you're not condescending about it or anything, except for me, because we have fun. But <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> it is, it is what it is. Yeah. But uh, no, you're you're always bringing such great content to this show, and I'm super excited to keep going on this journey forward with you. And uh, everybody out there, if you have not really gotten to know Colin all that well by tuning in, start checking him out on social media on Facebook. He he's always got great content there. Also, make sure you're lar liking our Facebook. Facebook page MMA Power Hour. You can see it go across the top of the screen every now and then, and uh, uh, support the people that are supporting us, like Combat Press, and uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and, and get out there. Uh, also, uh, definitely, definitely check out the CBD products over at war WarfighterHemp.com. They have some of the purest CBD products on the market. So anybody that's not wanting to have any THC inside of them, but wants to figure out the healing aspects. Uh, of CBD, they're your company you want to go with, and you can actually get a 50% off discount or 50% discount by uh, using the promo code in checkout, uh, MMA CBD. CBD, yep, absolutely, they're amazing. No arsenic, no filler, no crap. Half of their proceeds donated to uh, veterans. This is really serious uh, uh, in that we believe in them. War, fighter, hemp, fight the war, help veterans and 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 you get content product uh that's clean and that doesn't have crap not all cbd or cannabinoid or hemp products are the same so absolutely warfighter hemp if you're serious and you want something that that is great quality uh thank you for the kind words dr adam Rota. i really appreciate that you're you know you're making me look good here with always the great show and the great lighting and uh and the great graphics and 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 your fun personality and and you know knowing your stuff and your iowa wrestling uh pedigree uh even with it being high school still way way better than most people in the world so all respect to you fellow midwest boy thank you for everything you do it's my pleasure working with you and uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, next week, uh, we have a great show. Macy Chasson will be here, uh, fresh off her win a month ago in UFC Ottawa, Canada. She killed it and won the Ultimate Fighter. She killed it in her UFC debut, stopping her opponent, Gina Mazzani. She killed it in her second UFC fight, uh, going into Canada and fighting the Canadian Sarah Morris and stopping her and uh the you know winning the fight of the one of the performance of the night uh uh bonuses uh is what she did and the the sky is the limit for macy chess so, very nice girl from louisiana and we're looking forward to having her sunny ono will be with us as well former kickboxing champion on-air personality for wcw those of us over 30 five years old or 32 or three might remember uh, in the WCW days in the 90s when it was as big a show as WWE which was in WWF WCW Eric Bischoff Sonny Ono the evil uh, Japanese uh, valet and uh, you know American Japanese he's been here I think almost all of his life he's in Iowa now super cool guy he's got an amazing opportunity for people that want to get their foot in the door in professional wrestling uh, to talk about as well as a lot of other things all respect wonderful guy Sonny Ono over there in Iowa and uh, so we're gonna have John from Scotland we're gonna have Chris from England we're gonna have Dana Bluen from Thailand just a great show super excited Moo I think will be here he can't Moo now though he's not here Dr. Adam Moore is here I'll be here and uh, be kind to yourself be kind to each other take good care of your pets look out for your parents even your coworkers, be be the best you can be 
spread the love in a positive way. Be that guy, be that girl. It'll come back to you tenfold. And uh, go out and be a friend and take care of each other. And uh, tell someone you love them and you got their back. It'll really uh, be... Uh, more important and impactful than, than you might even ever imagine. All right. So for the entire team here at the MMA Power Hour, this is Colin Crandall and I'm tapping out.